This is video capturing the fiery collision early this morning. You can see the flames erupting from the Japan Airlines plane after it collided with a Japanese Coast Guard plane. All the people aboard the passenger plane are reported safe with some injuries, but five crew members on the Coast Guard plane are dead. All this comes as officials in the country mobilize to rescue dozens of survivors from an earthquake. For more on this, we have reached Graham Braithwaite. He's the Director of Transport Systems and Professor of Safety and Accident Investigation at Cranfield University in England. Now, Professor, what went through your mind when you first saw the video of this plane on fire? What were you thinking? So when I first saw that video, I, I just thought the outcome was going to be so much worse than it was. And, and, and although it's incredibly tragic that five people have lost their lives, I, I was expecting a much worse outcome. So the fact that the aircraft has withstood uh, the, the, the collision, the fact that the firefighters have, have responded so quickly and, and that the cabin crew have clearly done an incredible job in evacuating everybody off that aircraft is, is nothing short of a miracle. It's unbelievable. Almost 400 people on that plane and, as we say, just a, a few injuries from what we were hearing. So now, based on what little we do know at this point, can you help us understand how something like this could have happened? So a ground collision like this is an incredibly unusual event. But, but sadly, when they happen, they tend to have very tragic consequences. So for an aircraft, in this case, that looks like it's taxied onto that live runway, and it, and it must have done that at the very last moment, because all the way on descent, the crew of the Japanese aircraft um, will have been monitoring the air, airport in front of them. Their traffic control would do something similar. Uh, and they clearly had no time to take evasive action to, to go around and abort the landing. So, so for that to have happened, obviously then a, a fierce impact from, from the two aircraft colliding and, and then unsurprising that there was um, su such a bad fireball that came from it. Uh, but, but thankfully for the Japanese Air Airlines aircraft, it was able to, to roll out and stop and, and the evacuation take place. Yes, and as you say, just an incredible rescue. I mean, what would have been the process to get that many people off a plane that's already on fire, get them off in just as quickly as possible? So, so when a, a modern aircraft is built as a design standard, which says that in 90 seconds, you need to be able to get everybody off the aircraft, even if you're only able to use half of the exits. And, and so the aircraft is certified that way. But of course, that test uh, occurs in very uh, calm conditions, you know, and it wouldn't involve children or, or people uh, who perhaps have mobility issues. So, so for them, it to happen uh, for real, and particularly as a surprise that the crew would have known nothing about this uh, event about to have happened, really comes down to the, the cabin crew doing an incredible job of making sure that the passengers knew exactly what to do next. So in some cases, that is shouting very loud, very clear commands to unfasten a seatbelt. Even something as basic as that can, can, uh, can be a problem for a passenger who's experiencing the panic that might come with a sudden event like this. And then to shout them towards an exit that's clear where the slide has been inflated and that they can get away. And, and then, of course, you're depending on the fire service to make sure that that, that path is kept clear uh, from the flames in a circumstance like this. Wow, it would be so important for everyone to remain calm in that situation. But I wanted to ask you also about the investigation. What sort of a process will be followed to try and figure out how and why this happened? So the international convention is that the, the state in which an accident like this occurs will lead what we call a not-for-blame safety investigation. So there's a government investigation agency in Japan, uh, and their job will be to understand everything that happened in this case. So, so initially, they'll want to try and collect together the perishable evidence. So, so things like eyewitness statements will be... be perishable or vulnerable, as people tell the story, uh, that, that story tends to change. So they so want to capture those, make sure they've got the recorded data from the air traffic control tower, uh, from the aircraft and so on. And then they'll put all these pieces together to understand what the sequence of events was and what the causes were behind them. But, but the most important thing is, well, what can we learn from it? How do we, how do we learn from the things that went well? And how do we learn from the things that didn't go well? And, and that information is shared globally. So it'll go out to every manufacturer, every operator, and uh, every regulator around the world. 
Good to know. Now, Japan's Minister of Transport and Tourism has said they're, they're already working on getting the runways back up and running as soon as possible. How soon would be possible, would you imagine? So there's, there's two factors here. The first one is obviously the, the firefighting capability was focused on actually two aircraft here that were on fire. So uh, that means that during that time there wouldn't be enough capability to keep the airport open for other movements. So things like the, the uh, amount of foam would have to be replenished before those uh, vehicles could be used again. Once they are, then, then providing that there's another runway that's, that's separated from this area, then that runway could be reopened. I think the runway on which this accident happened may take quite some time to repair. I don't know how badly the, the damage was around that uh, aircraft as it burned, but I imagine that would be quite a significant job. I hate to ask this question, but I'm looking for a little bit of your perspective on this. How bad could this have been if the response hadn't been as effective and fast as it was? I think certainly there was the potential for significant loss of life uh, and, and there's a lot of things that have contributed to that, that not being the case on the, the Japan Airlines aircraft. So, so starting with the design of the aircraft, there's lots of things in that to make it easier for people to escape, to reduce the likelihood that, that poisonous fumes come from the flames and to, to protect the passengers. There's then the training that the cabin crew and the flight crew will have gone through, which will have made a big difference. We know that from previous accidents. That's a huge factor. Uh, and then the third main thing is that the response of the rescue and firefighting team, their aim is to get to the aircraft within two minutes anywhere on the airport uh, and, and to be fighting that fire uh, within three minutes. Uh, but clearly they reacted really quickly and that was, was what enabled people to get off the aircraft. Thank goodness for that. All right. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Graham Braithwaite is the Director of Transport Systems and Professor of Safety and Accident Investigation at Cranfield University in England.